Uh, thanks for joining us today, uh, first and foremost, for taking some time uh, as a part of our thought leadership series. Uh, this morning, we're going to be talking uh, about cloud and cloud strategy. Um, and so uh, thanks for uh, for being a part of uh, this event. And if you've been a part of our uh, kind of uh, ongoing uh, coffee talks uh, that we've been doing um, on a weekly or bi-weekly basis, thanks for joining those. And once a month, we're doing these kind of uh, bigger deep dives uh, and hour-long sessions that you know dive into one particular topic. Uh, here in January, we're talking a lot about cloud, and, and I think as I get into some of today's content, you'll understand why uh, cloud is uh, a topic that we need to cover, um, given everything that's going on uh, in our industry and in the world. Uh, cloud adoption uh, is on the rise, and we'll, we'll talk about that. Uh, so thanks for joining us. My name is Paul Hager. I'm the director of solutions here at Olevity. Um, Excited to spend some time. My responsibility within the organization is to help train, enable, and, and deploy solutions uh, on behalf of our customers across a broad range of technologies um, with uh, you know, really the finest team of folks in the Midwest uh, that strategize uh, and provide security uh, support and solutions uh, all across the, the Midwest. So uh, if you're an existing customer, thank you for your business and being a client of ours. Uh, if you're new to Elevity, um, thanks for joining us today and hopefully we provide some value. As always, uh, it's, I will certainly talk through the content today, uh, but would love to answer your questions about cloud, uh, cloud consumption, optimization, what's the right cloud, what is a cloud, all of those sorts of questions are great. Uh, throw those into the Q&A uh, inside of Zoom as well. We'll send out all the content resources and the recording uh, so you can share it uh, with friends and family after this. So again, thank you for joining us. Uh, so the agenda that we're going to walk through today is I'm going to kind of talk about why we're talking about cloud and kind of the state of cloud uh, within the world. And, and uh, COVID's had an impact on everything, and the cloud is no different. So we're kind of talking through some of those uh, items, uh, trends that we're seeing at Elevity uh, within our own uh, local Midwestern customer base. What do we see? Uh, and then since uh, this is a uh, thought leadership event and we have the whole hour, uh, if we take it, um, I'm going to break out of the PowerPoint a little bit uh, and really walk through how we think through uh, some examples of if you were a small business, um, what would a whiteboarding session around a cloud transition or digital transformation really look like? And I'll even pull up some of the tools that we use to help customers evaluate uh, and get to some of the pricing and comparison, because it's ultimately a lot of these decisions come down to uh, value and cost and price. And the tools that were provided by Microsoft are very transparent. And uh, so I wanted to, to break out a PowerPoint and actually show what an, uh, what we would do in a digital transformation conversa conversation with a small business, uh, and then also with a more mid-sized business. So I know we have a range of, of customers uh, on this call. Uh, and so I wanna be able to walk through both examples so you can take something away uh, from this uh, directly. And then obviously answer any questions that you may have. Uh, so we're going to start uh, kind of based on this uh, Flexera state of the cloud report that came out in 2020. Um, and Flexera is obviously, whenever we're doing trending uh, within the technology industry, it is often uh, trending based on enterprise uh, businesses. And so you might be on this call and, and not a part of Coca-Cola, and that's just fine. Uh, most of our customers are not. <laughs> uh, but uh, this is who we survey to kind of get a litmus test a little bit. And Flexera did ask some questions of the SMB and mid market. And I'm gonna to get to some of that information as well. Uh, but that's just to level set. Gartner is kind of the same way. Gartner and their magic quadrant, uh, you know, is really an indicator of the players of enterprise, which is fine. Um, what you'll find within our solution offering is that we tend to bring best in class solutions uh, to our customers. And those will often uh, be Forrester, Gartner, Tech Insight, Tech Validate, all of those companies, are, we're probably going to align solutions to people that are in the top quadrants of those. 
Uh, so within the enterprise cloud strategy, you can see here that most organizations are taking a multi-cloud approach. It's not even close. And so I think this is a trend that is, uh, you know, ubiquitous across both enterprise, small and mid-market. Uh, and when we mean multi-cloud, it means you're not going to consume just a single cloud. You're going to use a multitude of products uh, in your day-to-day. -day. So you might have... Uh, you know, your email filtered through a cloud uh, provided by Mimecast and then uh, put into a cloud provided by Microsoft in Office 365. Or you might um, utilize a e-signature platform that's in one cloud and a, uh, have some servers running an infrastructure service in Microsoft's cloud. Uh, so it can all vary. And when we say the word hybrid cloud, that means that 80%, 87% uh, of businesses are not entirely in the cloud. They're also using some sort of on-premise infrastructure in some way, shape, or form. Uh, and we'll kind of talk through some of those strategies, and I think that'll become a little more clear, even in the small business space. I want to get to some of our examples uh, later on. And so uh, you hear a lot about hybrid cloud, and that really just means we're having a mixture of using some on-site resources and using some of these cloud services. Um, as well. So who are kind of the leaders in cloud? And uh, from just a pure who is consuming the most cloud, uh, AWS uh, is still at this point uh, the leader uh, in, in, from an overall percentage uh, standpoint within enterprise. And that's predominantly, again, we're talking enterprise. So this is Starbucks and this is, uh, you know, um, Coca-Cola and GE, and they often are launching, you know, IoT and web applications and websites. Uh, and those are, uh, you know, AWS was kind of first to market uh, to really offer uh, true hyperscale uh, level public cloud offerings. But you can see uh, Azure is very close. And uh, when you add up the Azure currently in use, plus the, the broader experimentation going on in 2020, uh, you, you get to a point where Azure is, is really the market leader. And uh, when you add in Office 365, for example, uh, you know, Microsoft uh, comes out overall the largest technology company in the world. They, they reclaimed that, uh, that hat uh, here uh, in the last couple of years. And you can see everybody else is really vying for very small pieces after that. There's just a huge drop off from AWS and Azure uh, to everybody else. Uh, and, you know, including Google, Oracle, uh, VMware's cloud on AWS, IBM, uh, and overseas the the Alibaba cloud. So uh, you can see here that there really are two major players, uh, and uh, and while we all may be Amazon Prime subscribers, likely your business is predominantly a Microsoft business, uh, and so staying within that one offering uh, is often what has made sense to a lot of our customers, uh, and it's why we. Uh, you know, across the range of technologies that we offer, we are trained, certified, and gold partners very specifically in, in Microsoft uh, Azure because we believe that they are, uh, you know, the, uh, the, both the leader in the space uh, and, uh, you know, most adopted within our uh, small mid-market up to enterprise uh, solution set. So what are people, you know, as they looked at 2020 in specific, uh, what, are they, what are their initiatives, right? And so not surprisingly, given the impact of COVID on the economy and our financial situation, uh, the first thing is to optimize use of existing cloud for cost savings. So, uh, you know, as we get into public cloud and we start talking about and showing you examples of what it looks like to outsource the primary parts of your IT, meaning the running of your servers in your data center, your internet, your power, your cooling, uh, because you're, you're really doing all of those things when you shift that workload uh, to a cloud like Microsoft Azure. Uh, now it is true utility and consumption billing predominantly, unless you're using uh, what's called a reserved instance to maybe fix some of those costs. In general, there are always going to be parts of Azure or AWS or any of these public clouds that is utility building, flex billing, flexible billing that's going to go up and down based on your usage. And when you're not watching it, it's one of those things that can kind of creep up on you uh, over time. You know, you're storing more data, which means that you're having more in your backup jobs, uh, which is kind of doubling, you know, every bit of data you write into the cloud. When you include your replicas, maybe in other data centers or regions, plus backups in another region, you can be 2x or 3xing every bit of data that you write. Uh, and that can start to cause some creep in your, in your prices. Uh, and your costs. 
Um, and so there's a big push right now. We're helping customers go through, you know, cloud optimizations where we take a look at their consumption in, in a cloud and can help provide guidance. We even have some tools we can use uh, and Microsoft themselves even provide some optimization tools uh, that can look at your spend and make recommendations for uh, maybe taking some of that workload into uh, what's called a reserved instance where you are paying for a flat rate for a certain amount of that workload uh, and other things that we can do to just optimize uh, uh, what you have. So right next to people who are already high cloud adopters and we're needing to optimize our cloud spend, uh, we have uh, our clients asking us to move more workloads into the cloud. That's the other impact COVID has certainly had, uh, which is people are needing to work from anywhere and so we need to get our data out of the silos of our office. And maybe it doesn't make a ton of sense to have everybody working from home uh, and all of the data be back in the silo of a server sitting back at the office. Maybe now is the time and COVID was a big shove in this direction that we start, we get that data out into a cloud environment where people can work from anywhere. Uh, and now we're in a situation, I don't know about other folks on this phone call, but I know for ourselves, where we're in this hybrid, where we have some folks that are comfortable and at the office and want to be at the office, and we have some folks that are still not yet comfortable with being at the office. And so now, how do we bridge that gap from in-office people and out-of-office people, and we give them, you know, one experience ultimately in order to be able to do their work. Uh, the next line item is to expand the use of containers. So containers are a uh, emerging technology that I've been talking about for about two years. Uh, a container is is breaking down a uh, your workloads, your server into something that is completely movable. So if it's, if your server is running out of a container, that Kubernetes container or Docker container can run. Those are the kind of big names in, in the container space. Um, if it's kind of the next level of virtualization, you know, we took physical servers and we put them into virtual machines and we ran those on VMware or Hyper-V and we can move it between virtualization platforms <clears throat> with a little bit of work. Now, if you take that another layer deep, and you put that virtual machine into a container running in Docker or Kubernetes, now we can take that containerized virtual uh, workload and move that to any cloud or any on-premise environment anywhere in the world. And so you don't have to rebuild or refactor that uh, workload for being run in Azure or Microsoft uh, or AWS or even Google or on-premise or in Linux or in, uh, it's, uh, it's the next level of virtualization. There's not, Unfortunately, not every workload can run in containers. It's really predominantly used for websites at this point um, or in highly scalable websites. Um, but this is the next round of evolution of virtualization coming. Uh, and then the next one is this progressing towards a cloud first strategy. So cloud first strategy is really about saying everything we're gonna do, we're gonna try to do in the cloud because we believe that that is where we should be or the future direction of technology is. We don't want anything running uh, on premise, or we want to make sure everything that we say first, we should look at whether there's a cloud option for it. Um, and that's, that's a really fundamental shift in a business's thinking. And we're, we've certainly seen a lot more of that, even within our own customer base, beyond what you know, Flexera saw in the state of the cloud. Uh, we see this within our own customer base, but this is a really big challenge because it may require uh, really rethinking uh, how people do their work. You know, if you have, you know, at its simplest terms, you have an accounting department very used to using QuickBooks or Peachtree, the on-premise thick installed application. A cloud first strategy would say that that can't be anymore. Those are silos of data and applications that we don't want to tolerate. Cloud first means we need to completely change into a new accounting package that is a cloud uh, based system, QuickBooks Online, whatever it may be. And that may mean you have to change business practices. It may have a cascading effect of, well, if we change our accounting package, it means we need to change our billing. Uh, so now we need an API integrated or driven billing system, which means we need a different productivity or case management or practice management system or document management system. And that needs to be in the cloud. And so that's the digital transformation conversation that we need to have. Uh, but adopting cloud first and just drawing that line in the sand. Uh, automated policy-based governance. This is primarily driven, uh, primarily driven by GDPR uh, and some of the new privacy regulations that are going on. Uh, you can see a, a big desire to improve uh, financial reporting on cloud costs. Again, if you are a large enterprise, you are spending lots of money in cloud. So how do we optimize that? 
moving on-premise, replatforming that into software as a service. So not just lifting and shifting, uh, but actually replatforming something into software as a service. Um, and again, expanding public clouds, managing software using the clouds, uh, using broker and cloud services, use cloud-based managed service providers, uh, and different marketplaces that are available. Uh, you know, Azure is both a landing spot for your data and a marketplace to buy additional uh, or any sort of Azure native solutions to solve your business problem. This is now SMB through enterprise. Uh, what is an organization spend or where do they see in a post COVID world, uh, a percentage of response respondents that are talking about growing their use of public cloud specifically in the next 12 months. And it's over the next 12 months, 47% of people said they're gonna spend more in public cloud. Um, and they're going to go over their budget by 20, you know, 23% are saying they're gonna go over their original cloud spend uh, and lean into cloud even more. And specifically, cloud, uh, Flexera asked about the COVID impact on cloud usage overall. Uh, and you can see that, you know, again, everything green here is slightly more significantly more uh, than they had originally planned. That they are going to lean in to the use of cloud uh, during COVID-19 and in a post-COVID-19 uh, time period. And so, you know, I kind of looked at this in a number of ways. Not only is there kind of the anecdotal with our own client base, uh, we're having more people want to have cloud for strategy conversations uh, and that, that we're helping with our, our great team of solution architects and virtual CIOs. Um, but I, you know, Flexera saw in 2020 when they did their report uh, and then McKinsey went out and did their own analysis. And you can see in a, in a post COVID world, uh, the move towards digital uh, transformation uh, and increasing migration of assets to the cloud uh, was actually something that was, you know, way more than what was expected. So uh, uh, they called it an acceleration factor. COVID-19 moved to cloud, you know, was in the top uh, six or seven accelerated factors uh, that, that COVID started to push. So what did we see in 2021? Uh, you know, we saw the need to enable, uh, you know, rapidly enable work from home with collaboration tools. Um, we've seen the cloud have an impact in our, you know, our, our country's ability uh, to provide vaccine development and efforts without the cloud. You know, article after article talks about how, you know, uh, however you feel about how well the vaccine development and deployment has gone without cloud-based tools for massive amounts of data. Uh, to be stored very quickly and spun up uh, without the need to deploy a uh, lots of hardware. Um, you know, we, the cloud had a huge impact on our, our country's ability to get to even where we are now. Uh, schools had, had to build virtual versions of every school. Imagine that without cloud resources, without tools like Google Classroom or uh, Microsoft's uh, Go tablets or, you know, all of the tools that had to happen. There was a boom in, uh, in telemedicine. Uh, there was a lot of red tape, particularly around, we have a number of customers in the mental health space. Mental health was never allowed uh, by a lot of insurance companies. And that was the gate there. It was insurance companies were not gonna pay for a telehealth mental health session. Well, that had to go away. We are in maybe one of our world's greatest mental health crises with just the stress level of life uh, going on. and you know, with finances and the impact of COVID and the loss of uh, human life that we have had, we are maybe in, and not maybe it's not even a maybe, one of the greatest mental health crises we've ever been in. And so we had to enable telemedicine and, uh, and technology and clouds made that possible. Uh, and then governments needed to lever leverage the cloud for key social programs, uh, stimulus checks and all those sorts of things could not have been done unless there was a gov cloud certified cloud for government expansion immediately to access to resources to handle the influx. So cloud has had without question a massive impact uh, on our life in 2020 and will continue to have uh, that impact in 2021. So maybe you're thinking, all right, uh, that, that all sounds interesting and, uh, and those are interesting trends, Paul, and I, I guess I can see where, uh, where maybe we, we should be thinking more about cloud, but yeah, what does that mean for us? I'm just a, I'm a small business and you know, what is, what is, I'm getting asked about cloud from the owner or I am the owner and I, I'm eager to, to think about what this looks like, but, uh, but what, what does that really mean and where do we start? And so here's where I thought just talking through what our conversations would look like 
uh, and just providing some examples and just uh, start to, to show some of what we would do uh, if you're one of our clients or you're one of our prospects and we're going to start working through a cloud strategy with you, what just brass tacks, what would that start to look like? And so let's walk through this. And the first example I'm going to do is it going to be a smaller business. Uh, and then the next example I'm going to do is, is a little bit larger. And hopefully uh, you can tune into the part that's certainly relevant to you, but there is overlap because uh, there is some cloud uh, aspects of cloud that it doesn't matter how big or how small your organization is. Um, and there are some aspects that do. So let's let's just talk through one of those. So let's let's call let's pretend we have ABC company and they got 25 ish users. They're in a professional services space. Hey, they're already using Office 365 for email, uh, but they have a server on site for their file data. They got an S drive or an F drive or an H drive. They have a LOB or line of business application that's client and server. So they install something at everybody's desktop or laptop. Uh, and then they there's a server component to it. Think QuickBooks or something like that, uh, where you have to run, if you have multiple people locked into it, you have to have a, a QuickBooks server uh, running on a Windows server. Or you know maybe you have a SQL database uh, running an, an application or uh, time or billing or manufacturing uh, uh, ERP, all, all the examples that could be there. Uh, and this company invested in a lot of laptops during COVID just to get people home. Uh, they made those investments. So, you know, these are the things that we need to look at and really break these down into a, into a cloud strategy uh, for this small business. Uh, so let's just start walking through this. So they started using Office 365 for email. That's great. This is already SaaS. This is software as a service. But now we need to expand this offering, right? Um, now maybe we're working from home, you need to be utilizing Teams for not only collaboration, uh, but for voice to, to start deploying phones uh, in people's homes that can work from anywhere as long as they have internet. And you're already in the Teams collaboration suite, you're already using Office 365 and Outlook for email. So, you know, why not now? We, we could ship you a phone that is a Teams enabled phone tomorrow your end users log in with their exact same Microsoft credential that they used to log into their machine at work. And now that Teams phone will work with your Outlook calendar, tell you when you're busy or away, uh, and will make outbound calls to regular phone numbers, cell phones, landlines, and can work literally from anywhere. So whether that individual is still in a work from home environment or comes back into the office, that phone logged in with the same Office 365 login that they use every day and know every day, that phone will work and will make and receive phone calls uh, like any other phone uh, that is uh, VoIP or traditionally enabled. Just decouple that phone system from uh, your office that maybe you haven't been in in a while. And then in that expansion is also just going and training staff and collaboration tools. There is almost no company, I think, that is probably on this phone call that has had to use Microsoft Teams who says that they're using Teams for everything that they wish they could use it for. Uh, Teams is a hub for documents. Teams is a hub for collaboration on projects. It's a hub for collaborating with external clients and part business partners of yours. It's one-to-one -one chat. It's one-to-many chat. It's uh, where you can have meetings uh, and webinars and record those. Uh, it's just such a uh, a diverse uh, platform and it's being updated uh, you know every single day we just had our you know sales kickoff last week we did it all on teams with breakout sessions and we were able to go to the you know 49 box uh, to see everybody at all times on video we could spotlight the, the primary person who was speaking we recorded everything and dropped those videos into a channel in teams that people could follow up on in the middle of the recording, we're also uploading the PowerPoint that we had collaboratively shared, which lives now in OneDrive and Teams, uh, so people can see the content. You know, we are all in our Teams here internally, as we are cloud first and levity, and it's just had a huge impact. But it doesn't all happen overnight. We didn't learn uh, how to leverage Teams uh, in one day, and and maybe you have people working from home that are using Teams and chat that maybe chat wouldn't have gone over. Uh, it, it, when you're all in the office, um, but now it's become a part of life. Uh, maybe you're not to that point yet. And so, uh, you know, work with a partner like us to help train you, look at your evaluation and usage of Teams and grow that to the next step. Leverage what you've already invested in. Teams costs you the same amount of money every month, whether you use it a little bit or every single day for every single file in your organization. So that's the thing to think about is we need to optimize our cloud spend and usage 
these SaaS applications with a fixed cost to your business, let's leverage every bit of value we can get out of it. But now we need to not only just say using Office 365 for email is enough, we need to secure it. Uh, so there are add-ons to Teams that maybe you don't know about uh, called Cloud App Security uh, and partners with companies like Veronis uh, that add additional tool sets to watch. Now all these files and all these emails are now, all these people are working from home. Maybe you're a little concerned about the productivity of your employees at home. And now I just, you know, we send out that price list and our customer list in an Excel file and they're at home and I don't know what they're doing. I don't have cameras there. I don't have any way of knowing when they're working or what they're doing. How can the cloud help us? And the answer is it can. Office 365 and Microsoft had extension offerings to help monitor the, the usage uh, and to say, well, this is a little bit odd. You know, Dan usually works on five files and today Dan tried to open 50 and he hit download on 100. Let's, let's have that trigger an alert to, to you, a key contact uh, within your organization or to us and our service desk team to say that that's an unusual level of file activity. So we got to get into that securing phase um, as well. And now when we're talking about email, certainly your email should be filtered by something uh, that is trying to, to stop some of the phishing attempts because 80% of bad days start over email uh, and security is always top of mind. Uh, but we need to now automate some of that security training. There's no time uh, to have people sitting in conference rooms doing IT security training uh, and people aren't in conference rooms and can't sit anyway. So we need to just start getting into an automated system of testing our security, doing phishing tests and following up with digital training uh, for uh, our employees while they are in a work from home environment. Here's one of the big ones. I'm a small business uh, and I got files. I got that H drive. I got that S drive. Uh, so there's a couple of options that we have here. We, we know we got to migrate, right? If we're going to not have that server sitting in there, um, we, we need to make a decision about where it's going to go. So replatforming means that we're going to move this to software or platform as a service. We're going to take those files, uh, go through their security rights, and we're going to go through the effort of getting these moved into OneDrive SharePoint Teams, which are in a lot of ways the same application. Teams uses OneDrive underneath. Uh, OneDrive in the web is really a, a derivation of the SharePoint application, uh, which is a web-based document management platform. And here is where a really good partner uh, like Elevity can help you with this migration. Uh, Relook at your security and your rights and your access to each folder, uh, carefully manage and migrate. Uh, it's not as simple. Uh, unfortunately, the cloud has different uh, rules about what, you know, what uh, letters and characters can be in a file name. There's different rules about what file types are supported, uh, the length of a file name. There's all sorts of little gotchas. And so we can help assess uh, your replatform and migration plan. Uh, and then we need to you know, work with your end users in training and understanding uh, about how they can now access that shared drive and maybe sync that data with their machine so that while it's offline, you can still have access to those files. But when you reconnect, they upload and stay in sync with other team members. That's going to require training, might recover or require a rollout and reworking of your desktop policies. Uh, maybe you need to deploy an additional security tool to make sure that if people don't sync files and then drop them to a USB drive and walk them out your proverbial door. Uh, the other solution we've had for some organizations that, boy, they really need the speed and performance. And there are certain files that are very large in their business. Think uh, maybe uh, something like an engineering firm or somebody that deals with a lot of large uh, files, BIM files, things like that. You know, maybe the answer is we still have a small on-premise server, but we have a mirror of that server in a way in the public cloud running. And we can set those files to stay in sync with each other. Uh, so you still get in this experience of when you're in the office, you get an S drive. When you're out of the office, you get an S drive. Uh, but these files stay in sync with one another. Uh, and we can use Microsoft technologies to do this, something called Microsoft DFS, Distributed File Services. There's Azure File Sync. There's also third-party tools from organizations like Panzura, um, as well as a, a host of other applications and tools that we have at our disposal uh, to make this possible. This is the true hybrid cloud setup. And we have some small business customers of ours uh, that leverage this with a, instead of worrying about having redundant everything on premise, 
uh, we worry less about that on-premise redundancy. We just have a single very small footprint server on-premise and we leverage the replication and real-time availability of the cloud uh, to keep a copy of that in the cloud. But this way, your applications that are used to having a shared drive or a mapped drive uh, still work without kind of any, any hiccup. Uh, so this true hybrid approach uh, is a good fit for some individuals. Uh, and now we get to the trick, the line of business application, the, the ERP system, the thing that makes your business run that's a little unique that everyone's been trained in for years and years and you don't wanna retrain them in Salesforce or Dynamics. But that's the first choice is you just have to say, look, we're gonna need to be a cloud first organization and that means we're gonna have to rethink the tools we use to run our business. And the leaders in this platform as a service space that is entirely web-based are Dynamics 365 by Microsoft and Salesforce. You know, they have versions of applications of the, uh, flavors of Dynamics and Salesforce that can be re-swizzled for every type of business out there almost. But it, it means significantly changing your training, your workflow, maybe your accounting package, your billing systems. Uh, and that, that does sound like a lot of work, but this is the world we're in. And if you make this, this step, you know, Levity, we, we do what we say and we say what we do. We've been in a platform as a service as our ERP for a number of years. So when we add a new uh, staff member, we know the exact cost. We know the monthly cost of a user that gets them all of their SaaS and PaaS tools that they need. And there isn't any variability to what we do. And we aren't dependent on any server being up and running. And our team could immediately go into a work from home environment uh, because we were always uh, cloud-based and cloud first. And maybe that's what you expect of us uh, as your uh, IT and technology provider. But it was really critical for us to continue to grow and scale an organization, especially as we cover uh, now an entire Midwest. Uh, and as we look to hopefully expand into other states and other areas as well. Then there's obviously the lift and shift option here. We can, and I'll talk and walk through an example of this. We can actually take your server right off the server you have on site and move that to a public cloud. But now your data lives in that public cloud. Um, so this Microsoft gives you this little example. We have, you know, these, your endpoints here, your laptops, your tablets, et cetera. And we can provide you access using remote desktop or an HTML5 interface. Uh, to a virtual desktop that's running right alongside all of your vet, uh, your Azure virtual machines and services. Your Active Directory runs as a service. Your server running your line of business application runs in the cloud right next to it. This is a great way to trick applications if you're still running something that's uh, from a company that you know is really wired into your business and you really know how to use it, but the company isn't very, uh, your provider of that software is not very cloud first. And so we need to trick it. We need to put it on a regular Windows server. We just need to move it out to the cloud. But now uh, we're using all those laptops now, uh, but users are gonna log not into their laptop, but they're gonna use their laptop as just the keyboard and mouse and portal uh, to get to their virtual desktop running in the cloud right next to their line of business applications. But now that we've extended ourselves to the cloud, what are we going to do when we launch Teams meetings and things like that? What if we plug in a USB drive? How does that get connected all the way out to the cloud? And that's where a true virtual desktop deployment and conversation about needs to happen in a strategy specific to your business around making that happen. And then just kind of the cost analysis of, of what it will look like to run that uh, uh, for, uh, for your organization. Uh, and then I'm just going to quickly move through because this uh, XYZ company of 150 users is very similar. And then I'm going to get out of PowerPoint and we're going to show how we walk through some of these things. Uh, you know, 150, 50, 1,000 users, the guidance isn't going to change around leveraging the cloud for software as a service items like your collaboration tools. Uh, and same for files. Again, it, these platforms scale from five users to 5,000 users. Uh, the guidance around uh, how you handle files in a cloud-based world, whether it be a hybrid strategy, a sync strategy, a leveraging platform as a service or doc management in the cloud strategy, it's going to be the same uh, in a lot of ways. The difference here typically is we see our larger organization partners, uh, they're going to have multiple. It's not going to be one line of business application. It's going to be two. It's going to be many, and they're going to have maybe 50 virtual machines that they need to run their business or 20. And they're going to probably be more database driven. Maybe they even have data warehousing or data reporting needs. Uh, they're also, though, have going to done a lot of the same things during COVID. 
uh, and they are going to have invested in new endpoints to enable people to work from anywhere is probably something that they would have needed to do. So we walk through as we take this from just concept, we have this conversation with you about where your business is ready to accept replatforming uh, and changing applications is the first conversation that we have and whether your culture and your change management is gonna be able to handle moving from an S drive to OneDrive or moving out of a different accounting package. Your, as we have those business conversations, keeping in mind that cloud first, that driver to be more agile, the, the driver to be able to predict your monthly cost and not have big IT swings and expenditure maybe every three to five years as you buy more stuff and you put it in a closet, uh, which is, which is great to know in a way that you can run a business really cost efficiently uh, as you make a CapEx expense, but it's not cloud ready. It's not flexible. It's not, as we saw in the beginning of this presentation, there's just this migration that is going on that you just can't ignore in the industry uh, towards uh, cloud solutions. If you are a large organization, you might, you're gonna need to start using uh, some of the tools that we have access to uh, as a cloud partner as a data center optimization managed gold partner within Microsoft, uh, we had just have access to a different set of tools. And uh, we're gonna give you a, a sneak peek at some of these that we have in the background. Bandwidth is gonna be a concern as you access the cloud, uh, as you decide to still do a hybrid strategy where you're gonna have access to an S drive that you need to stretch to the cloud, you, you might need more bandwidth. You may, and uh, their egress traffic out of Azure, you get charged for every megabit of traffic you have coming down unless you buy a direct connect uh, or you buy a managed connection to public cloud. So maybe that'll need to be factored into the final solution. Uh, it's gonna require new backup tools, uh, new monitoring tools maybe even, uh, things like that. So uh, walking through the calculation and how we're gonna manage that, uh, I think is really just worthwhile to, to kind of put pen to paper. I'll also use this break for people to, to take a moment to throw some questions in as well uh, that we can come back to. Uh, so this is Microsoft Azure's pricing calculator. Uh, and I can be very transparent and there will be numbers in here because we don't do anything different than Microsoft does. We, we if you become a partner of uh, ours uh, for consuming cloud in Azure, we're gonna give you the same price uh, that you would get if you were to plug your credit card in and just become an Azure customer yourself. Uh, Microsoft has made it very clear that they want transparency in that, in that pricing when you're buying in what we call the consumption model. Consumption is whatever Microsoft bills us, we bill you. Um, and we just pass that along in a lot of ways. You can buy completely managed services wrapped around Azure from us where we will manage your costs and optimize them to the best of our ability and deliver to you just a final completely wrapped in solution that includes our monitoring management cost optimization uh, all at once as well. Uh, so we have both ways that we can do it because we are a tier one CSP uh, that uh, can wrap these solutions all together for you. Uh, but there's no problem and we're always going to, even in a managed Azure scenario, going to work from this calculator uh, to build out your environment in the cloud. And that's that's what this tool is. It's at azure.microsoft.com forward slash pricing calculator. Um, you can do a quick uh, Bing or Google search for it as well. And you're going to you're going to come up with uh, this tool. And so the way that this tool works is you'll see here on the left, we have all of the things that make up the Azure Goop. There is just thousands of different products within Azure. And this is why we have jobs because we can help you figure out which of these uh, is the way, uh, are the things that you need in order to build out uh, a solution for your small business um, or your, your mid-sized business. So the first thing that people need uh, or we kind of walk through is to think about how you are going to get to the cloud. So the first thing we probably need is a VPN uh, to connect your on-site business uh, to the cloud. And you'll see, I click the button there to kind of add it to our cart. And if we just drop below that, as we scroll down here, and we can give this uh, estimate name, SMB demo. This is the name of what we are building. Um, you can see here, we're just gonna build out our list of services. And the closest to us here in the, in the Midwest is this North Central region. Uh, which is generally the Azure facilities in the greater Chicagoland area uh, is where these are. And we're gonna, we want our data to live here primarily, 
uh, and then we're going to put our backup in a different region. Uh, so as a VPN gateway, if we're going to have a VPN connected uh, all the time, uh, and we want it to be set up to go to the firewall that we have at, back at our office, um, there's different levels of uh, VPN with a different amount of uh, tunnels back to the office. So there's up to 10 that are included here in a site-to-site -site connection back to your office. There's roughly 720 hours. Again, this is all billed hourly. So there are months that have more days and more hours in them. Your invoice is going to be a little bit bigger um, all the way kind of through, all the way through. And then how much data is going to be transferred outbound uh, from your business as well. Uh, so we have to make estimates of what this would look like. And this is part of the variability that you have uh, in your invoice. Uh, so assuming that we're going to have uh, you know, a fair amount of data, uh, and again, the site-to-site -site tunnels, you get these 10 uh, first for free, which works for most of our small business customers. Uh, this is kind of the start to get a secure connection uh, between your uh, location on site uh, and your location in the cloud. Uh, the next thing we're gonna probably need is uh, some servers in the cloud. So instead of uh, selling you a server with so much RAM, uh, we are actually able to pick, uh, and again, we're gonna wanna keep this all in the same region. We're gonna wanna pick a, a virtual machine. And these are all the types, they call them instance types. And you can just see there is a ton of options. Uh, ranging from uh, the smallest instance with a single processor and not even a full gig of RAM up to just some massive virtual machines that have 96 processors and 380 gigs of RAM and more. And this is where a partner like us can help select what it is that is right for your business. Uh, one of our favorites, the B2MS, uh, is two virtual uh, processors and eight gigs of RAM, a very uh, typical virtual machine. Uh, and we're going to make sure that that has a hard drive attached to it. Uh, and we want that to be a little bit more of a performance hard drive, a standard solid state drive. And we're probably on a server going to need that drive to have at least 100 gigs of space to it. So now you can see we have one virtual server running in the cloud. We have a secure connection to that virtual server. Uh, and at, right here at the bottom, uh, you're at about $200 a month uh, to uh, to have you know, a, a very basic uh, server set up and in the cloud. Now, what's interesting uh, about this is, let's say you know, we don't need just one server, but you need a, a multiple servers to run your business. Uh, we can just increase the number of matching virtual machines to this uh, virtual machine as well. You'll see that you're getting all of your Windows licensing as a part of this. Uh, so you don't need to also buy an open license from Microsoft as well. But now let's talk about how we can optimize this cost. First of all, you get no support uh, at, at a $0 price point. If you would like to be able to call because there's an issue with your virtual machine or we want someone to be able to call on your behalf, you'll see that there's a standard support plan of $100 a month or the ability to call direct is $1,000 a month. Here's the great news. Here's the differentiator. When you buy through an organization like Levity, you get this professional level of support at no additional cost. So we price it at the same price that Microsoft does, but we get to extend our pro support contract to you uh, as well. So you can call through us and we can raise tickets with Microsoft and this $1,000 uh, can just be at uh, $0, which is a big difference and why you wanna work with a partner besides needing a partner to help you pick each of these items out. Here's where we can get into the optimization steps. Let's say you come to us and say, you know, we're going to go all in on cloud and we promise Microsoft that we're going to keep this virtual machine on at all times. This is an entirely consumption based model is what we're telling Microsoft right now. We're saying that we might change this virtual machine from a two to a four. Uh, we're saying that we might turn this off at night. You know, this is a completely consumption model. And so you're paying a completely consumption based price for this for these two virtual machines of this particular type. If uh, together we're going to commit to Microsoft that we're going to run this virtual machine for one year or three years, and if we're going to help, I said that you're paying for this license, and that was nice that you didn't have to worry about a separate license. It is a little convenient, um, but it's also consumption-based, and Microsoft doesn't know whether you're going to turn that server off and not need that license anymore. If we help sell you uh, a Microsoft 
uh, server license that has software assurance, which has the Azure hybrid benefit on it, we can take advantage of you pre-buying uh, that uh, license. And if we said we're gonna run that virtual machine for three years, look at how much your price changes. So instead of, so just with some optimization around the licensing, these two virtual machines go from costing $265 a month to only costing $91 a month over. And again, you're committing to run that for three years. And we're not gonna shut it off. And we're gonna agree that we're gonna run that together. Microsoft will let you trade those credits in and up uh, if you wanna move up uh, in your size of that virtual machine. But there's just a, a huge opportunity for savings. Uh, in, in Azure by making a, a monicum of commitment to it, right? So with two servers and a VPN, we're at about $400 a month to run your business uh, a rel you know, with some data transfer and some things like that. Now we always need backup. Anything in Azure, uh, while Microsoft is handling uh, the data center, it's, your data isn't being written just on one hard drive, it's being written on multiple servers across multiple data centers. We wanna make sure that there's a copy uh, of all of your data. And here, we're not going to stay in North Central. We're going to go to the East Coast. We have two virtual machines we're going to protect. They have about 150 gigs worth of data on them. We're going to keep 30 days. We're going to keep four weeks. We're going to keep six months. We're going to keep one year. We want to be able to instantly restore any of uh, the last five days. And we're going to want to make sure here we can have it just be locally redundant because it's in a whole other data center. Uh, in the East Coast. So now we have backup costs that we have added to this uh, solution offering as well. So now we're up to about $450. Well, here's the trick about Azure. We don't control when they decide to do maintenance in the North Central region. Uh, and there could be an outage that happens within North Central alone. We wanna make sure these are running all of the time. Azure Site Recovery is the way to, to handle DR as a service uh, and to have that disaster plan. And we're gonna put that in a completely different center on the West Coast. And we're gonna make sure that those two instances of Azure are being restored anywhere uh, or be available to be restored anywhere. So now our data is not only in the Chicagoland region, it's in the East Coast region and we can even recover it in the West Coast region as well. For $500 a month, and that's with no optimization to what we have going on. Again, we optimize at three years with our licensing craftiness. We can run this business with two servers being backed up and replicated across the United States uh, in a really scalable way for around $300 a month. Again, we're gonna have some fluctuation. You're gonna need more data than this. You're gonna have download costs and upload costs. Uh, we're gonna have some higher costs in month one and two as we migrate your data to it. But the cloud doesn't need to be as scary. We can work, move your workloads uh, out to a uh, Microsoft Cloud. And this is a pretty typical small business with two servers. Now, as we need to move all your desktops along with it, right? Because now that your servers are out here, we might need to have a virtual machine or desktop available for every user uh, in, your, in your business. Uh, now we're gonna wanna make sure that we bring our operating system along with uh, our Windows 10 license that we're gonna bring along with ourselves. We're gonna go buy those outright or we're gonna have them part of our Office 365 subscription. And a typical desktop in the cloud having maybe uh, two virtual CPUs and eight gigs of RAM. And we're gonna to need to have, we have 10 people that work uh, at any one moment, uh, but we're definitely gonna to commit to running these desktops for everybody. And we're gonna make sure they're a little bit faster. We're gonna make sure people have enough hard drives to work and disk space to work. Now we can see really for two servers, and all of the desktops that somebody might need in order to run, um, needing that we're gonna buy our Windows 10 licensing as part of Office 365, we can still run this entire small business for a relatively small price point. I think on a whole, this is all of your costs, all your data center, everything that you need, whatever laptop that you can bring uh, that has you know, the basics of Windows 10. And then we still need to layer in managed services to monitor and manage and keep antivirus because that's still your problem. Microsoft is just providing the underlying infrastructure. You can see again, that commitment to running it for three years can really help your business optimize its use and really make possible uh, from a pricing perspective, uh, the use of public cloud. 
So that's a small example for a small business, what we can do to optimize and look at a pricing example of a real cloud first strategy that eliminates a lot of the on-premise infrastructure. And maybe that hybrid approach, doing this plus one server on site so that if you are in the office, the files are accessed even faster because all of this is in a data center in Chicago and that's a little bit far away. If you're one of our mid-market customers on this call, we have an even more elaborate tool available to us specifically as a partner where we can take a, we can do uh, an assessment of your environment. Here we had a customer that had uh, about 34 virtual machines, 34 servers that they needed in order to run their business. And we can drop those into this table, uh, provide all the virtual CPUs and RAM, pick the storage, and we have a tool that then makes a suggestion for what virtual machine is the most matching to the one that you're already running on site, what instance, what size, and then even a more optimized version, knowing that what you run on premise, the cloud can do more efficiently. This tool can help us pick an even more efficient model, and then it can run those scenarios for us. So it runs directly if we just take what you have on, on, on premise and move it to the cloud, it'd be about $5,200 a month or $71,000 a year, or we can apply reserved instance pricing to it and bring that down by $20,000, or we can use the optimization recommendations that we would make based on our tool set to bring that price point even further down and then use reserved instances again to bring that price point even down even more. And you can see that year one, we might make an investment in those reserved instances, but over time we drop our costs. Uh, substantially. So you can see over I just, you know, not knowing what you're doing, not working with a partner over three years, you might spend $200,000 to run uh, that, that workload. And that's, that's not atypical to just buy, uh, you know, a number of servers and a sand to run your storage, all the backup pieces to support that. This is not a, this is not an out of bounds number, but when working with a partner and really optimizing, you know, we can get this number down substantially to an amount that enables your business to be able to work from anywhere, to not have to worry about hardware cycles and to still have a managed service provider be a partner and work with you and your team uh, to really help you. And again, all that's optimized, that pro support comes along with whenever we are helping you with public cloud with Microsoft Azure. So these are just some examples of some of the tools that we use when we start having a cloud strategy and start talking about leveraging uh, the, you know, this is specific to Azure and the public cloud, um, but these are the calculators. These are the tools we're going to use as we break down and try to get through not just the, the secure it, not just the productivity suite, but really get into the, the crux of what makes moves to the cloud more difficult, which is your business applications, your ERP systems, your billing systems, all of those sorts of, of pieces to the puzzle. So if you find yourself, uh, you know, a part of this that you're interested, what would this look like? Uh, we do cloud assessments. We analyze what it is that you have, uh, what it would look like. We build a much more detailed plan than kind of the, the whiteboard that I was doing here within uh, PowerPoint, but it's, it's not that far. And this is what it would look like. And we would get you a detailed report of what our strategy with a diagram and estimated costs and all those optimizations you saw me taking those numbers and having a drastic impact on the price of those numbers uh, by just being aware of how we can play some of the licensing uh, opportunities that Microsoft has for you um, and, and really leverage the licenses you have now and, and maybe a more creative way to do it uh, is the difference between and, and then the support piece, right? Is the difference between cloud looking like it's just way more expensive to something that, boy, it looks awfully close to what we spend on average in a three to five year period uh, on the hardware as well. As always, you can feel like uh, feel free to reach out to me or our team here at Elevity. I'll get you connected with myself or one of our experts that can help solution architect a cloud strategy for you and your business. So with that, I'll, I'll take a pause for a moment, uh, have a sip of coffee and see if uh, in all of that, uh, we've generated any questions about cloud and cloud strategy. Nothing today. Everyone, I've answered every possible question about the cloud that could have come up. 
I did pretty well then. We're supposed to have our, our fake questions that come from, uh, from our, actually from our marketing department. Um, we didn't do those this morning, so maybe I'll, I'll end up just playing jazz music again until, uh, until we hit the top of the hour. Everyone hangs on though, because if somebody asks a good question, then everyone wants to hear uh, what the potential answer to it would be. Well, that's okay. Uh, maybe you're still formulating what this means for your business. Reach out to your point of contact here at Elevity if you're an existing customer. Again, thank you for your business. Uh, your VCIO, your account manager is going to be, uh, you know, certainly uh, your best point of contact to start the discussion with us. Um, but uh, if you're new to us, uh, you know, reuse that assessment form to reach out to us and we'll get you uh, to the right team members. We have team members that help our small business customers and team members that help our our mid-market uh, and uh, enterprise level customers. Um, but thanks for taking some time to, to join us today. Encourage you to join our session on Friday. Um, we're doing a great coffee chat with uh, Peter Niebler, one of our solution architects, who really has been uh, instrumental as a part of our emerging technology team uh, here at Elevity. Um, so emerging technologies at Elevity, we actually have a, a group that meets uh, which includes myself, VCIOs, solution architects, uh, engineers, uh, technical resources that you work with. And we wrestle with and talk about the uh, discussions of what are we seeing within our own clients? And what do we see going on in the industry? And that's how we come back and develop and make recommendations for the next step uh, for our customers and their technology. So it's a, not just one person, but a group. Uh, and so Peter on Friday is going to dive into this more as well and just talk about uh, some of the directions in cloud competing that we have. Well, thanks uh, for taking some time out of your day to join us. Uh, please join us in future sessions. Stay close to our blog, our social media, uh, and our website uh, to see future events. Uh, thanks for your time today. We'll send out a copy of all the great stuff and materials and, and recording, uh, but hope everyone has a safe uh, and wonderful week. Thanks.